For almost 30 years, Marjorie McBach has been a nurse, first manning operating rooms in several hospitals, then working in mental health. I learned a lot about myself in mental health. I think it was a huge personal growth time. It makes me understand um, tolerance and where I'm coming from, how I'm going to react and what I contribute to their lives. I sort of feel I look after their souls. That deep sense of caring often takes Marjorie beyond the call of duty. When the son of one of her clients is diagnosed with melanoma, Marjorie goes out of her way to help. We put him in a house next door to uh, the lodge where I was working. He became quite ill, so we kept him there and gave him uh, injections to stop the pain and until the time he went to the hospital and then we could take his mum, he passed away. So it happened very quickly. The memory of the young man is still fresh in her mind when she visits her native Australia for a holiday. But the nightmare of his death casts an even darker shadow shortly after her return home. I just had a shower and um, I looked down on my leg and I saw that I knew it was something new and different and I pretty much knew straight away that it was a melanoma. The melanoma looked like a freckle, you know, not, not looking like a normal freckle, but, uh, but not looking extremely different from any other mole or freckle. When we found out it was malignant, um, then of course the worst fears come to mind. We knew that we're, there was a long road to walk down and that we had to share that road. And, um, and although I may have felt fear myself, I, I just couldn't imagine the, the pain and the fear that she was going through. I went into hospital the following Monday and had it removed. Home should have been a place of comfort, a place to rest and recuperate from a serious operation. But for Marjorie, it became the source of her sadness that took hold and wouldn't let go. I felt very alone. Uh, the kids had left home by this stage and uh, had their own life. My husband was working in Vancouver and I was here by myself on crutches and, and it wasn't easy. Whether consciously or subconsciously, I let down and allowed depression to overwhelm me. It brings tears to my eyes now because I felt very vulnerable. I felt very alone. It was an isolated time when I didn't know what I needed. The nurse who had once run an OR, who had once been so outgoing, so independent, so caring for others, now lashes out at those who care for her most, including husband Sam. I got out of the shower one day and I think I pounded at his chest and I said that's for all the 15 years in the military that I felt I wasn't in control of my life. I felt other people were making decisions for me. With Sam at home on special leave, they decide to take steps to help Marjorie deal with her depression and her cancer. They meet a man who tells them about a clinic in town that specializes in alternative therapies. I had massage therapy and I found that they were so welcoming and just a different atmosphere. I felt secure, I felt nurtured, and I felt that it was the right place for me to be. The massage therapist suggests another form of body work that uses the hands and the body's own energy, or chi, to release deep-seated emotions that influence our thoughts, actions, and physical health. It's called Shen, Physio-Emotional Release Therapy, and the practitioner is a medical doctor, Dr. Nora Marcos. I consider myself a, a doctor who's incorporated the knowledge of the, the relationship between the mind and the body and the emotions and, and the spirit, really. Um, into my way of, of treating people. Shen therapists believe that our most painful emotions are trapped within us and can trigger physical responses that contribute to everything from chronic pain and migraines to eating disorders and depression. Shen practitioners are trained to release these emotions by directing the patient's chi energy with their hands. When I put my hands on somebody, it's not like I'm giving them my energy. It's like where our energy systems are meeting. I'm the guide who's carrying the flashlight into that person's healing journey. And what happens there depends as much on the state that the person is in, the deep willingness to allow some change, to allow a knot to get a little bit looser. That's just as important, probably more important than my hands being there. During their first session, Dr. Marcos takes Marjorie through an in-depth assessment seeking to learn everything she can about her patient's health, both physical 
and emotional. She talked to me at length and things that I thought I had left behind in my life under my toenails, that I had pushed it down so deep, came up. A lot of tears came up for her and a, and a feeling of vulnerability, which is quite common because when we get back in touch with our emotional life and, and acknowledge it, it's, it is like an opening up and it, it feels like we're less shielded. I've always had a void. I thought it was because I lived so far away from Australia and I didn't have extended family. But when I got finished my first treatment, I think I cried all the way home with my husband. I said, I don't feel that void anymore. I felt so connected and I felt uh, a certain tranquility and peace. As the treatments continue, Marjorie can feel herself changing, opening up to the healing process going on deep inside. I actually healed from the bottom up. I think that when you get depressed, sometimes we're fearful of it. But I think it's a healing process where it, it exposes you to your vulnerabilities. I felt very open to explore who I truly was as a person, and, uh, and yet I felt really protected. And, uh, and I think it's a place a lot of people are very fearful of going, uh, me too. At the same time, she reported being a lot um, more calm, a lot more peace within herself, and less of the kind of roller coaster up and down, um, and less anxiety. There were some changes in the relationship with her husband that followed these sessions as well. My husband and I had counseling, and it's helped our relationship tremendously, and so it's probably the best it's ever been. I realized that I had to be a person that was capable of absorbing and listening to what she had to say and not necessarily having to give comment because I think she just wanted to get things off her chest. The changes inside her begin to manifest themselves in other areas of Marjorie's life. She quits her high-stress job. To help maintain her physical health, she follows a program of nutritional supplements and pays close attention to her diet, eating organically produced food when she can. And she uses acupuncture and shiatsu massage to further fortify her emotional well-being. Today, Marjorie has a new job, managing a hospice for the mentally challenged who are also chronically ill. There has been no sign of melanoma since her surgery. But as terrifying as her cancer was, there is a silver lining. I think that the cancer exposed my vulnerabilities. I think the depression made me very aware of something that's probably always been in my life. And this particular process that we've gone through has brought us closer to being soulmates than anything else. I think she's, she's learned to bring focus back a little bit on herself. She's more in tune with herself. So it makes it easier to, to be in tune with her. Not everybody can tell you what's best for you. You need to explore those areas and pursue it. Take control of your life. Be worth it 